morning and welcome to our worship this morning. It's very good to have you worshipping with us in this way. I'm very pleased today that our service is being led by the Reverend Stuart Brock and our readings today by Patricia Gatherham. So please do join us as we worship together. We begin though by singing and we're going to sing the hymn For the Beauty of the Earth. So let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Praise to you, Lord, for you are a giving God. You give us a wonderful gift of the world in which we live. You give us each other to love and care for. You give us a community of faith to share times of happiness. You give us a community of faith to hold us up when life is hard. You give us tasks to do, people to love, challenges to learn from. And you give us the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, to be our friend and our saviour. You give us the Holy Spirit to strengthen us for service, to which we are called. Send down your Spirit to guard us and guide us now and in the days ahead. Praise to you, Lord, for you are a giving God. 
We are sorry, Lord, that though you are a generous God, we have often been ungrateful for your many gifts. We have squandered the riches of your creation. We have ignored the cries of the poor for justice. We have been unkind to those we love. We have been hateful to those whose opinions differ from our own. We have envied the rich neighbour. We have blamed those with little for their own misfortunes. In all these and many other ways we have broken your law of unfailing love and compassion. Yet you are a generous God whose mercy is endless, and you forgive those who are truly sorry for their sins and shortcomings. We are truly sorry. By the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen us to live in your world as those who truly follow Jesus, in whose name we pray. And we say, as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14 to 30, the parable of the three servants. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there was a man who was about to go on a journey. He called his servants and put them in charge of his property. He gave to each one according to his ability. To one he gave 5,000 gold coins, to another he gave 2,000, and to another he gave 1,000. Then he left on his journey. The servant who had received 5,000 coins went at once and invested his money and earned another 5,000. In the same way, the servant who had received 2,000 coins earned another 2,000. But the servant who had received 1,000 coins went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The servant who had received 5,000 coins came in and handed over the 5,000 coins. Sir, he said, look, here are another 5,000 that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant, said his master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had been given 2,000 coins came in and said, You gave me 2,000 coins, sir. Look, here are another 2,000 that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant, said his master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had received 1,000 coins came in and said, Sir, I knew you are a hard man. You reap harvests where you did not sow and you gather crops where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid, so I went off and hid your money in the ground. Look, here is what belongs to you. You bad and lazy servant, his master said. You knew, did you, that I reap harvests where I did not sow, and gather crops where I did not scatter seed. Well then, you should have deposited my money in the bank and I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. Now take the money away from him and give it to the one who has 10,000 coins. For to every person who has something, even more will be given. And he will hear more and he will have more than enough. But the person who has nothing, 
even the little that he has will be taken from him. As for this useless servant, throw him outside in the darkness. There he will cry and grind his teeth. Here endeth the first lesson. The second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 13. And because of God's gracious gift to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you should. Instead, be modest in your thinking and judge yourself according to the amount of faith that God has given you. We have many parts in the one body, but all these parts have different functions. In the same way, though, we have many. We are one body in union with Christ, and we are all joined to each other as different parts of one body. <clears throat> so we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. Whoever there shares with others should do it generously. Whoever has authority should work hard. Whoever, show, whoever shows kindness to another should do it cheerfully. Love must be completely sincere. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Love one another warmly as Christian brothers and sisters and be eager to show respect for one another. Hard, work hard and do not be lazy. Serve the Lord and with a heart full of devotion. Let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. Share your belongings with needy fellow Christians and open your home to strangers. Amen. I wonder if you like talent shows. I'm not a great one for them, but I did look in on one quite amazing one a few years ago. It's a programme that I don't think anybody involved will forget in a hurry. It was the usual big audience in a television studio and the judges in a row in front of the stage. And then onto the stage walked a fairly diminutive woman, in, probably in about her 40s. Not the usual talent seeker or talent provider for the programme. And there were some strange looks went round amongst the judges as this diminutive figure moved to the centre stage. There was a hushed whisper. Then she began singing. She opened her mouth and out came the most wonderful voice. The audience gasped and then started clapping. They got on their feet, the judges too, applauding and cheering. And so the career of Susan Boyle, an almost unknown singer from Scotland, was launched. She had the most surprising of gifts given her st status, a rich voice, and she clearly sang from the heart. I dreamed a dream from Les Miserables. When she said that she would say singing was her life, she meant every word of it. The word talent is an interesting one. In Matthew's Gospel, it means a sum of money that was entrusted to the servants. In modern parlance, a talent is something that is a God-given gift that we can use for purposes good or bad. So the parable of the talents in Matthew's Gospel neatly bridges between both worlds. The ancient Romans thought of a talent as an item of currency 
we think of it as a personal attribute. The modern certainly derives from the ancient. The parable of the talent is set as a sort of filling, sandwiched between the parable of the wise and foolish virgins and the sheep and the goats. All three are to be seen in the context of the teaching about the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus gave in his last week of life. What will the signs be of its coming, and what must disciples do to prepare for it? In this parable, I have to say that I have a sense of sympathy for the one talent servant. Whenever I have had interviews with a financial advisor, when he or she has asked me about my willingness to take on risk in financial investments, I've always been very risk averse. The one talent servant is like that. He's fearful of the future in a time of what we might today call market volatility. He's no banker. He probably judges that it's not a good time to take risks. Being timid, he just goes and buries the treasure. Perhaps I'm reading too much into the characters in this narrative. We shouldn't devote too much attention to the details of a parable story because it can make us miss the main point. New Testament scholars of the middle 20th century might remind us that there is usually one main point to be gleaned from any of the Jesus' parables. The rest is largely the result of the storyteller's craft, the rabbi's teaching, gift of embellishment for dramatic effect. So the point, I think it's this. All have been given gifts and talents to be used in the service of the king and the kingdom. And we should use them to the best of our ability. If we commit to this with determination, God will add to the blessings we receive. To squander those gifts, whatever they are, is to waste the precious opportunity that may come to witness to the world, to speak of God's love, and to act to make the kingdom's coming sooner. But, we may argue, I don't have any gift to offer. I can't sing, or I'm too young, or I'm too old. And I'm certainly no financial whiz kid with the ability to make a fortune. And yet, you may not have the voice of Susan Boyle, but we can in our worship sing out with joy in our hearts. But we can, when the pandemic finishes, and we can sing again in our churches at least. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, encourages his young friend, Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love and faith and purity. <coughs> Do not neglect the gift that is in you by prophecy and the laying on of hands. Timothy was very young. But he was enthusiastic. He was keen. He had gifts to share. Children and young people have much to offer. They can challenge us. They can make us think differently. Our task is to nourish and include them in the life of the church and encourage that radical thinking which might jolt us out of our complacency. Maybe we think we're too old. Then we should remember the story of Abraham and Sarah, who in the stories of the Old Testament took on the task of founding a great nation. When Sarah was told that she was going to have a child, she laughed, for she was way past childbearing. But that story reminds us that we are never too old to share the gifts of love and grace that we have. We may not be in the prime of life, we may be feeling the burden of the years, but we can at least offer to God our slowness as an opportunity for meditation and prayer 
in a less frantic way when all around us are in chaos. We can pray for those even whom we cannot know, for prayer itself is a gift. We may not be financial gurus, but we can make use of what money we have and use it wisely and well to support charity, to uphold the church and to pay our taxes joyfully as our responsibility to society. And the parable of the talent suggests that we should be prepared to take risks to see this come about, to see the kingdom come in our day and age. It's no good burying what abilities we do have in the hope that all will still be as it was when the time comes to reconcile our accounts. Times move on. Human life changes rapidly as we know only too well at this present time. Who could have imagined what would be happening across the world this time last year? The parable suggests that through all the sadness at the loss of life, acknowledging the courage of the medicos, through the dramatic changes to the way of life of society and of the church in this age, some new things will emerge which we cannot yet imagine. Through our gifts and talents, maybe the Holy Spirit is leading us into new challenges that will test our faith, but bring new blessings. For those who have, still more will be given. Amen. We come now to our prayers for others. At the end of each short offering of prayer there will be a pause for silent reflection. Let us pray. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We ask God to help us share in the blessings and the heartaches of life. In this time of uncertainty and fear, let us pray for all those dramatically affected by COVID-19. 
Let us pray for those who have been taken ill and are struggling for life and recovery. Let us pray for those who risk their lives in seeking to help and heal the sick. Let us pray for children and young people whose lives and futures are being affected, for schools, universities and teaching staff. Let us pray for all who are mourning the loss of someone they love. Let us pray that through the darkness of these times, light, hope and peace may come. Despite the darkness, light does shine. We thank God for those joyful occasions which take away some of the sadness and bleakness of our living today. So we pray for those newly born, for their celebrating parents and grandparents, that they may grow together in strength of family and in loving commitment to each other. We pray for those celebrating positive life changes, retirement, a new job, special birthdays. And as we do so, we hold before God those who have lost their jobs and their livelihoods because of coronavirus. Especially at this time, we pray for the United States of America, with whom we have many ties of friendship and family. We pray for the unity of purpose and the healing of divisions in that great land. We pray for the church in the face of so many changes in our lives. May we be given a new vision of what God can do through the challenges of today. We pray for our common life together in this community and for the supporting role of churches in bringing people together. We pray for those who are aged or sick or lonely and pray that we may find ways to be a comfort and a strength to each one we come before. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
you, Stuart, for those prayers and for your thoughts this morning. Wonderful to have your reflections to reflect upon our passages today. We finish with a blessing. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all today and for all the days to come. Amen.